This is 88.5 XPN, The Folk Show. I'm Gene Shea, and coming up in, oh, 20 minutes or so, we're going to be doing a festival show. Uh, if you already uh, didn't hear, just tuned in, we're going to be uh, going over to the World Cafe studio shortly, talking with the people who put the festival together, the producers, the programmers, the uh, honchos. And this year, it's really special because it is the 50th Folk Festival. It is my 50th. Certainly a central thread in the Philadelphia folk scene has been Gene Shea. For the last 50 years, host of a folk radio show and MC of the Philadelphia Folk Festival. So let's welcome to our 40th festival, Eileen Ivers. Thank you. There's something special about folk music and it's so hard to define. In fact, just trying to just tell people what folk music is, nobody really knows, you know, they just think it's a twangy guitar and some old timer is saying, hey, I woke up this morning. And it's not that. It's Little girl, it's been a long, 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 long. It's usually music that is not written to make a profit. It's usually written to entertain, or it's written like a union song to get people to do things. And they're songs for the people. They speak of the people's language, and they, 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 they uh, use uh, relatively easy terms to understand. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. The other thing about it is folk music changes over the years. And uh, that's the way folk music moves and changes. It's the folk process, they call it. A lot of the songs were never written down. The Philadelphia Folk Festival is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, and Gene has emceed and much more since day one. Here's someone who. Uh, was very important and has always been important to the Philadelphia Folk Festival and it's so nice to have her back here in Schwanksville, Upper South Real Township on our festival stage. Let's welcome Judy Collins, ladies and gentlemen. Fifty years as a key figure in the rich Philadelphia folk scene means that Gene Shea has more than his share of stories and he doesn't mind sharing them. I mean, I knew Jim Croce and used to do uh, not only radio interviews with Jim Croce, I remember I introduced him to Arlo Guthrie when Arlo Guthrie came to town would be on my radio show. I remember the first time I ever went to one of these big folk festivals, back around 1962 or three, I think. No, that wasn't the first time. That was the last time. Not only is Gene marking his 50th anniversary at the festival and on the radio, but it's his 20th anniversary on WXPN. That's one, two, boys. One, two, I want to break the ball. This song was written by, you know, by, by uh, Apple and Cassidy. His real name was Bill Boyd. I want to play my favorites. You know, Sunday's my night to entertain my audience, and I want them to hear the same song. I want them to hear it like six months later, just to hear it again, so they can enjoy it as much as I do and feel it deep in their heart and soul. Dear Abby, dear Abby, my feet are too long. My hair is falling out, and my rights are all wrong. My friends, they all tell me they have no friends at all. I oh, want you write me a letter, won't you give me a call? One of the things Gene loves about folk music is how accessible it is, both to the audience and anyone who wants to play it. Folk music is a great community of people. People who love the music, who love to jam, and they don't have to be great musicians. You know, folk music is very participatory. It's the kind of music that you can feel, feel good about just going, you know, you know, or playing spoons, or playing, a, take a comb and put a piece of wrapping paper around it and it sounds like a kazoo. So anybody can get into the act if the song's fun, you know, and you feel like you have been taking part. It's a hoot nanny, man, you know, we're having fun here. And that's the essence of the community aspect of folk music. Gene Shea has shared new songs, helped musicians find an audience, and told a corny joke or two for 50 years at the festival and on the radio. 
A guy spends $3,000 to buy a, a bird that talks four languages. He brings the bird home. He sends it to his mother in Fort Lauderdale, and he calls her and he says, Mom, did you get the bird? She said, yes, it was delicious. He says, Mom, wait a minute, Mom, that, that bird cost $3,000. It speaks four languages. She said, well, why didn't it say something? Here we go. One, two, one. He's a Philadelphia treasure. This is Radio Video.